The Netherlands. It is a very special place for me, considering I live there, but I found recently an image on Reddit from user Harun Aiza, specifying a lot of information about the Netherlands in an iceberg format. Now, most of you already know what an iceberg image is and how the format works, so I won't be explaining it further down the line here. But what I do want to preface is that we're going from top to bottom. We're going to talk about a lot of interesting stuff and a lot of weird stuff. So strap in and be prepared for the Dutch iceberg image. Let's get started. But first off, let's just get the boring ones out of the way first. Clogs. Windmills. So excited are they about their wind energy that the Dutch railway CEO quite literally strapped himself to a windmill. Tulips. Polders. Bicycles. Really? And cheese. Cheese. Dikes are also pretty cool to keep the high tide of the sea or rivers from reaching the cities or habitable land. The Delta Works are one of the most interesting of these since they use complex mechanics to protect the land using dams, sluices, locks, dikes, levees, and some storm surge barriers, all located in the provinces of South Holland and Zealand. These are the most basic common stereotypes of the Netherlands because most people associate them when you think about the Dutch. The VOC was the most valuable company in human history. The VOC was a multinational corporation founded by a government-directed consolidation of several rifle Dutch trading companies in the early 17th century. It had an estimated net worth of $8 trillion, which is more than Apple, Google, Microsoft and many other companies combined, making it the most valuable company in history. The company traded mostly with Indianized South Asian countries, where they would trade capital for spices to send them back to Europe and create other delicacies that they could use for pummely pump situations. I don't know, what do you think I am, an historian? <laughs> they had quite a role in the 17th century and that's why this time is sometimes referred to as the golden age of the Netherlands. If you want to know more about the VOC, I will leave some video links behind in the description. Drenthe does not exist. The forgotten province of Drenthe. <laughs> no, it's not. This is a popular meme within Dutch subreddits where people claim that Drenthe doesn't exist since it's very sparsely populated compared to the rest of the country. It's an entire joke entry on the list. Now, don't worry, Drenthe is very beautiful. It has tons of beautiful farmland and a lot of rocks. So let's get going. The Party for Non-Voters Paradox The Party for Non-Voters, or Nietstemmers, is a Dutch political party that was founded by Peter Plasman with the goal to represent people that don't vote in parliament and other layers of government. The party has zero political viewpoints and they don't even want to participate during debates. But they did partake in the 2017 general election, winning absolutely no seats in parliament. <laughs> <laughs> the paradox here is that you can't represent a non-voter in parliament because people have to vote for the party if they want them in parliament. Therefore, it is fundamentally impossible to represent non-voters in a democratic process. But fun fact, they actually got 6,025 votes, nearly 0.06% of the total amount of votes. So technically, they did vote. However, that was possible. Just assume that this is a joke. 
The progressive policies entry refers to the fact that the Netherlands is well known for having a lot of progressive policies. A famous example was that the Netherlands for the first time acknowledged marriage equality for same-sex couples on the 1st of April 2001. Furthermore, the Dutch legalized prostitution in 2000 and euthanasia in 2001. They decriminalized soft drugs like cannabis and ecstasy in 1992 with large amounts allowed for possession. Since then, drug-related deaths in the Netherlands has become one of the lowest in Europe. And according to the World Drug Report, it shows that the prevalence of the cannabis use in the Netherlands is less than half of that in the United States. The Netherlands is not a sovereign nation. Now, this is where we're going to get technical. The Netherlands, as in the Netherlands here, is one entity of the four constituent countries within the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And is therefore not an independent nation, but a first level subdivision of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, which is the actual entity that is sovereign according to the UN. The other three entities in the Kingdom of the Netherlands consists of Aruba, Curaçao and St. Martin, which are all located in the Caribbeans. There are also these three special municipalities within the Netherlands called Bonaire, St. Eustatius and Saba. I mean, if you want a good explanation, go watch Geography Now or a video made by C.P. Gray. But what they don't show you in those videos is what we're going to talk about now. Nuclear weapons? For a long time, the Dutch government had tried to <laughs> to hide it but eventually it was confirmed that the military base in Volkel Brabant was a hidden storage facility of American nuclear weapons. It is believed it all started around the early 1960s when the US Air Force wanted to store its nuclear arsenal at Volkel Air Base which could subsequently be used by its host nation's aircrafts. Weapons were originally stored on the north side of the base in heavily defended quick reaction alert areas. However, since 1991, 11 WS3 weapon storage and security system vaults are operational in the floors of the aircraft shelters. Let's just say there were a lot of nukes on that base, which could have been used during the Cuban Missile Crisis at one point during the 1960s, but uh, that is for another day. But on June the 10th, 2013, former Prime Minister Ruud Lubbers confirmed the existence of 22 nuclear weapons at the airfield. Concurrently, the US Air Force 703rd Munitions Support Squadron is in charge of maintaining and securing the weapons. The 66 leaked Funksy Elders document on purpose. This one is very recent and overly complex and probably deserves its own video, but to hopefully keep it brief, this theory claims that after the 2021 general elections with the VVD being victorious for the fourth time, the second biggest winner and political party, Social Liberal Party D66, tried to damage the reputation of the other parties like the VVD and another party, CDA in order to gain influence in the coalition process after the national elections. Now, for the most part, this has been kind of a conspiracy theory, so I will tell the real story right now. So after they started talking about forming a coalition, one minister by the name of Olgren had accidentally leaked a very confidential paper, which said on the document, Pieter Omzicht functie elders. Meaning, or suggesting at least, that the extremely popular CDA member of parliament, Peter Omzicht, should find a career in a different field because he was too critical of the ruling elite, or at least in the CDA party. Now, this sparked a huge national controversy among us, among us! in which demissionary prime minister Mark Rutte, yes, him, almost got a motion of no confidence. Luckily for him, he didn't receive it. 
The news came out a bit at the wrong time, considering that Omtzigt was a leading figure in the child welfare scandal investigation, which resulted in the last cabinet to fall. Congratulations, you won! A large majority of people thought that the coalition parties, and especially the CDA, tried to remove him out of parliament, but CDA said that they wanted to ease him because he was exhausted from work. Even to this day, there is still no official statement made about why they wanted to make Omzig find a new career in politics. Now, the entry on this list is extremely oversimplified, but this is the core idea of the entry. But keep in mind the whole on purpose thing is just a conspiracy and there's little to no evidence that they actually did this on purpose. Pieter Omzicht has since stepped down from CDA to begin his own political party and he now runs as an independent member of parliament. Wilders Global YouTube Shutdown A few years ago, infamous politician Geert Wilders of the Party for Freedom made a very controversial video about Islam on YouTube called Fitna. Wait, what? Live leak? I thought it was YouTube. Ugh. It was just the trailer that was on YouTube in which he criticized the Islamic faith for a bunch of not nice things. This resulted, of course, in heavy backlash from Pakistani political parties who eventually and temporarily banned YouTube as a response to the anti-Islamic statements. This was done by the Pakistani Telecommunications Authority with cooperation from another ISP provider called PTCL. This block inadvertently knocked out access to YouTube for two hours because the ISP broadcasted the wrong route to YouTube worldwide IP spaces by accident, even though it was only intended to be for Pakistani users. To get a little bit technical here, this was partially caused by the BGP protocol or borderline gate protocol, which routes users to specific websites they want to go to via autonomous systems or ASs, which in this case was YouTube. But because PTCL routed their asses to their empty page, this caused YouTube to look a little bit broken. If you want more information about the subject, go watch Half As Interesting's video. The Flying Dutchman Sightings The Flying Dutchman is the famous urban legend about a cursed ghost ship that is doomed to sail the seven seas forever. Many people throughout history claim that they have seen the ship on open sea during stormy weather. Examples include Prince George V who claims that he saw the ship in 1881 in Australian waters. Another sighting happened in 1939 nearby Cape Town and a sighting during Suez during World War II by a Nazi submarine. But guys, he's on fucking television! He's in SpongeBob! Mark Rutte's sexual preference. <laughs> <laughs> now, this might sound strange, but the sexuality of our Prime Minister, dear Mark Rutte, seems to be one big mystery, as he never had a known relationship with a partner. He has been single for basically his entire goddamn life. No bitches and no homies. Many tabloid journalists came up with a bunch of theories about his actual sexuality. Some people claim that he has a re hidden relationship with journalist Erik Mauthan, who is confirmed to be a homosexual. Pretty unlikely this is true. Another theory states that Rutte has a hidden relationship with radio DJ Marike Elsina. Wait a minute, what the hell? Furthermore, there are many other theories about secret relationships, but in conclusion, it is possible that Rutte is either straight, gay, bisexual, or a very well-known asexual icon. Well, if he's an icon is debatable, but you know, we'll have to see if he ever gets a relationship. Join me next time in part two of this video.